The debut of Capcom's Resident Evil in 1996 helped solidify the then still burgeoning video game subgenre of survival horror. And with its story of zombies, viral engineering, corporate corruption, and the few brave people standing between terrifying evil and civilization, producer Tokura Fujiwara and director Shinji Mikami's smash hit game became an instant classic. And that success quickly led to Resident Evil 2 in 1998, 3 in 1999, Code Veronica in 2000, and both Zero and a remake of the original in 2002, quickly pushing the franchise's defining original elements of fixed cameras, scarce ammo, puzzle solving, and creeping terror to their limits. It was, at the time, the continued refinement of what had been considered the essential elements of the niche survival horror subgenre, an experience that prioritized putting the player at a continuous continual disadvantage to keep suspense as high as possible. But the continuation of the Resident Evil franchise happened across multiple systems and alongside other survival horror franchises that evolved the subgenre while RE remained largely frozen in its specific interpretation, besides some advancements in Code Veronica. The time had come for the Resident Evil franchise to make a leap forward and undertake fundamental changes to remain relevant. And for the franchise under Mikami's direction, those changes would be made in Resident Evil 4, which debuted in 2005 with a fundamentally different approach to survival horror that focused on action, greater mobility, and a more proactive offense against the monsters hiding at society's dark edges. RE4 follows Leon Kennedy, co-star of RE2 and a former Raccoon City police officer turned US government agent on the trail of the president's kidnapped daughter, Ashley. Leon's pursuit leads him to a rural village in Spain where his investigation soon turns into a battle for survival against an enormous horde of enemies controlled by Las Plagas, a mind-controlling parasite that gives its hosts strength and strange mutations. But most of all, a susceptibility to the whims of the evil Lord Sadler and the Los Illuminados cult. And as Leon fights deeper and deeper into enemy territory, he uncovers a conspiracy for worldwide domination while trying to stop Las Plagas from taking over his body. With its gothic castles, grimy villages, and squirming parasites, RE4 was a change in direction for a franchise that had been defined by zombies and the evil Umbrella Corporation. But most importantly, it was the chance for Capcom to push their marquee horror franchise into the modern age. And in doing so, Resident Evil 4 was able to reinvigorate the franchise through several crucial tweaks to the survival horror video game genre. By seeing how these elements were integral to the refresh, and how they've aged in the context of the series' history, we can see why Resident Evil 4 is a classic of the genre that is still influencing video games today. The roots of Resident Evil 4 date back to 1999, with Shinji Mikami, the director of the original Resident Evil, working with several different creative teams on four different abandoned projects, until finally settling on the direction that would become the published game. But Mikami was always intent on making an action game first and foremost. The initial designs, which centered on a superhuman protagonist whose action-focused abilities required an over-the-shoulder camera, and whose gothic aesthetics led the team to travel to the United United Kingdom and Spain for research, was eventually turned into Devil May Cry, but the seeds of this new Resident Evil remained. In 2001, Capcom reached an exclusivity deal with Nintendo to release their games on the GameCube, and development of Part 4 began in earnest. This first Fog iteration was set in a castle and starred Leon, who became infected with a virus, and was 40% finished when it was scrapped in favor of a new Hookman version by 2003. This iteration took place in a haunted mansion, still had an infected Leon, and now had living suits of armor, ghosts, and more supernatural enemies. Yet another iteration, dubbed the Hallucination version, had Leon and a girl with a bioorganic weapon dog trying to survive a killer and the return of zombies. All of these versions eventually led to the finalized Resident Evil 4. But you can see elements of each in what became the aesthetic stew that is the published game. Most importantly, it was Mikami, who eventually took over as director, who in insisted on the new over-the-shoulder combat-focused game design. According to Mikami, many longtime Resident Evil team members were hesitant to change the fixed camera angle room-by-room -room progression of the series, as this had been the defining aspect of survival horror until this point. But Mikami believed that the series needed to change in order to grow, 
a belief that was affirmed by the lower than expected sales of the remake and RE0 for GameCube. Survival horror is rooted in the player being unable to ever fully arm themselves against enemies, and as such, are consistently at a disadvantage, increasing the fear and anxiety of the game. The change in camera angle, weapon cache, and tone is the change from survival horror to action horror in the Resident Evil franchise. This is the empowerment of the player over the horrors the series creates. And while that means that RE4 is overall less scary in favor of being generally intense, it also means that the series was given new life after the classic, increasingly dated approach to survival horror began to grow stale. Controls play a crucial role in the thematics of every game. Classic fixed camera survival horror controls are, despite their dated stiffness, designed to evoke a sense of helplessness and fear in the player. Each room holds new terrors. Players have limited mobility through tank controls, and offensive capabilities are often limited or even useless, evoking a sense of muscle spasming terror like a slasher victim who just can't get those damn keys in the car engine. These limitations intensify intensify the deadliness of even a single monster, and project a classical sense of horror, like Bela Lugosi's Dracula descending on helpless victims, or George Romero's Night of the Living Dead surrounding a small group of survivors with a throng of slow and terrifying dead. Each encounter is a test of nerve and wits, with the player needing to choose between standing their ground or making a run for it. Even as the character gets stronger and stronger weapons, the threat and its accompanying fear remain. That's definitely not the case in RE4. With limited ammo and weaker guns at the start, players are able to pick out their laser-guided shots, evade enemies, and jump out windows. It's a new, action-focused hero for the modern age of gaming. In doing so, RE4 becomes horror light and headshot heavy. And it should go without saying, but any horror story, video game, film, or otherwise, that gives their hero a machine gun isn't so much about survival and is more so about feeling badass. Still, the controls of RE4, both purposefully and due to limitations with the game engine at the time, are stiffer than what someone might expect from an over-the-shoulder action game. Leon is still stiff and somewhat immobile in a tank-like fashion. Players must stand still and line up their shots, standing their ground and creating a vulnerability and anxiety that builds as hordes of fast ganados descend on you and then, oh there goes your head. This is purposefully meant to offset the newfound offensive capabilities, giving the player a dose of that old RE feeling when a single zombie shambling down the hall toward you was enough to induce panic. It is, however, still in line with what Mikami believed to be essential to the genre, with the creator saying, To me, the definition of survival horror is a game where fear and the sense of exhilaration coincide. In Resident Evil 4, it's exhilaration first, accompanying this story's big, bombastic, extremely cheesy storyline. A major component to the popularity of the Resident Evil franchise is the cross between serious horror thrills and campy schlock storytelling. It's the reason why fans of the franchise can enjoy the most terrifying moments of the series, while also loving the hell out of its most groan-inducing lines. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right! And each game veers between the two poles on this serious horror thrills silly camp index, sometimes for the best and sometimes for the worst. RE4 falls squarely in the middle, and that's the secret behind its success. Because for all its innovative controls, challenging AI, and pitch-perfect difficulty balance, the story of 4 is out-and-out B-movie trash that can't seem to choose which genre it's stealing from. Mikami and company chose to open 4 in the woods outside a rural village, first pushing pushing Leon and the player into a rundown cabin with a Night of the Living Dead-esque encounter that emphasizes the absence of zombies. But it also surrounds the player with backwoods corruption. Given that Leon, an American in a Japanese-designed game, is sent to a rural Spanish village, means that both the lead character and the game designers don't know anything about the world they've entered. And really, there's nothing that reflects reality in the world of Resident Evil 4. The purpose of putting the game in Spain is to use medieval aesthetics that shift hard away from the American metropolis of parts 2 and 3. 
The first and possibly most iconic set piece of 4 has Leon enter a small village, and before the player can get settled into the combat system, they find themselves surrounded by aggressive, hard to kill people and one terrifying bag headed chainsaw killer. Here, the game most reflects classic Resident Evil thanks to its lack of ammunition and need to scramble to safety. It's easily the scariest part of the entire game, and as the opponents get crazier, the giant mechanical stone Salazar statue is the type of gonzo Resident Evil boss that shows just how much fun its designers were having. And the weapons get deadlier, the fear dies away in favor of heavy firepower that puts the player on the same level as their opponents. We also get to learn more about this game's creature, Las Plagas a mind-controlling parasite that fills the bodies of Los Ganados until it bursts from their heads at night. That difference in monster changes Resident Evil from a modern interpretation of George Romero's zombies to a kill em all interpretation of John Carpenter's The Thing. Given its focus on action, shootouts, and aggressive combat, it's not surprising that the early creeping terrors of the game's first moments give way to crazy bombast and high energy. You can see the shift occur over the course of the game's three main locations, moving from the small-scale horror of the village to the strange gothic atmosphere of the castle, and finally to the high-tech gun-heavy action of the island. In this way, the change of forest setting reflects the progression of the first game's world, moving from weathered mansion akin to classic universal monster movies to the high-tech laboratory beneath, showcasing a modern horror that lightly comments on viral outbreaks. Like the original, the more the characters dig into the mystery of the horror they've found themselves in, the more they realize that it's corporate greed and deeply embedded corruption that's responsible for the flesh-ripping terror that's taken over. But don't expect too much real-world commentary from the game. That's not really Resident Evil 4's bag, or really the intentions of any game in this franchise. Just as how the other game's usage of the Umbrella Corporation was more of a veneer regarding Big Bad Corporate America, 4's use of Lord Sadler and Los Illuminados is more lip service to the idea of religious corruption and exploitation. Really, RE4 is ticking off the boxes of big-budget blockbuster movies with its plot elements, melodramatic deaths included. Lewis! Leon is every action hero rolled into one, firing off groan-inducing one-liners. Monsters. Guess after this there'll be one less to worry about. And looking cool as hell while firing off rocket launchers. You can call it the Twin Snake Syndrome. Replacing the grounded thrills of the series with an ever-increasing extravagance and balletic action that explicitly tells the player to suspend any and all disbelief in the GameCube generation. It's a suspension that would demand more and more from players as the series continued. But really, Resident Evil 4 is silly. It's big and weird and garish. It has no socially or culturally redeeming values. It doesn't have deeper resonating themes. But by god, it's fun. And well-designed fun. And that alone has value. RE4's release was one of the major selling points of the Nintendo GameCube, which had lagged behind the competitor systems of its generation. However, 4's success and Capcom's need for a hit in the series led the developers to backtrack on their exclusivity deal with Nintendo, releasing a slightly graphically inferior version for the PlayStation 2 only 10 months later. The company argued that RE4, for whatever reason, was exempt from the exclusivity deal and, as a result, the PS2 version outsold the GameCube version 2.3 million units to 1.6 million. It was a shady but smart decision for Capcom. RE4 exploded in popularity, and its technical shakeup to both action and horror quickly imprinted on gaming's approach to both. So the franchise whose future was once in doubt was once again raking in the big bucks, and it was full steam ahead on more action-oriented entries into the main line of the franchise. Cue Resident Evil 5 in 2009 and the franchise's full-on descent into out-and-out -out superhero ridiculousness, culminating in the identity crisis of RE6 in 2012. In the span of seven years, the franchise had once again reached the end of its rope being passed up by competitors innovating on what had once been Resident Evil's innovation. Of course, Resident Evil isn't the only name in survival horror video games. It isn't even the founding game of that subgenre, but it is its flagship series. 
Forer's reinterpretation of horror through an action lens redirected Capcom's series for both good and bad, but it also opened up the world of horror games to new interpretations, letting its influence bleed out into other genres and blurring the lines between horror and action. New Silent Hill, Alone in the Dark, Dead Space, Fear, and more all modeled themselves after Forer's action-oriented horror continually upping their combat over time and lessening the terror. While survival horror would continue to branch off into many different perspectives and styles, the echoes of 4 can be felt as far as 2013's The Last of Us, blending over-the-shoulder combat the Naughty Dog had refined through their Uncharted series with a focus on horror. Today, the over-the-shoulder perspective is ubiquitous to the point of being almost de facto in action games. Eventually, the RE4 approach shaped Capcom's remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3, placing an action emphasis on games deeply entrenched in the old ways of survival horror, even after Resident Evil 7 had once again reshaped the franchise through its first-person approach. And while Resident Evil 8, Village, will continue the first-person terrors, its weathered European setting follows in the trend of 4, possibly paying off the supernatural elements that were considered in the versions that never came to be. These constant changes in franchise direction, while still clinging to the classics, are the solidification of Resident Evil as a concept that is larger than any specific iteration, and a name that is too big to fail, constantly swinging back and forth between exciting innovator and technological dinosaur forcing developers to both react to and reshape the culture constantly shifting around them. Like the original, Resident Evil 4 is a flashpoint of innovation and passion, still enthralling to players a decade and a half later, and beckoning us back to that lonesome, terrifying village, where now familiar evils await. Hello and thanks for watching today's video. As you can tell, we're now full on into the Halloween season for videos on the channel and I'd been wanting to cover Resident Evil in a video for a while, so I figured now would be a perfect time. Resident Evil 4 was one of my favorite video games growing up and it was a lot of fun to replay it in recent months for research into this video. And it was also really interesting to dig into the behind the scenes history of the video game and also its mechanics. The Resident Evil franchise is a lot of fun, it's, it's messy, it's weird, weird, it's all over the place really as a video game series, but that's what makes it so interesting. I'm not sure if I'll do another Resident Evil video anytime soon, but it would be interesting to return to another aspect of the series. In any case, whether you're a longtime fan or have never played an RE game before, I hope this video was interesting and entertaining for you. We're rolling into more Halloween videos as we speak, and if you support me on Patreon for only a dollar a month, you'll have early access to everything, so you can stay in the Halloween spirit long before we get to the actual holiday. As always, thank you to my patrons for continuing to support me. I hope that you're all doing well, staying safe, taking care of each other, enjoying the Halloween season, and having fun any way that you can during the lead up to the holiday. I'll be back again soon with another Halloween video.